Alito Chimichugna, this is Chief Steve coming at y'all with another one. I just wanted to um, share something with you guys, something that I ran across my timeline uh, not too long ago. Uh, I found it very interesting. Uh, before I get into that, I just want to say, Yokoki, to all of my new subscribers, we are officially 300 plus strong in our community this is a real good thing. It grew significantly after our last video, which is amazing. Um, let's keep that community going. Let's keep it going strong, this camaraderie, because our people are waking up. And it's important that we continue to share this information uh, amongst ourselves and amongst those who are curious. And the most important thing is to Share it amongst our children. Share it amongst our youth. Because our youth are the most curious, especially our kids. If you have kids, you already know the questions are going to come left and right all day, every day, 24 hours a day. About, hey, mom, hey, dad, what are you doing? What is this about? You know, so it's important that we continue to keep our kids Keep our youth, keep this next generation in a loop, especially when it comes to our true story. And when we teach them the true story and they go out into the world, allow them to speak their truth. Allow them to be proud of who they are, because that's what held us back in the past generations. That's what's put us in this situation today. A lot of our older ones, as children, were told not to voice out their opinions, not to voice out, you know, their truth about how they felt and about who they are, you know. And granted, I've heard the stories. I have even heard accounts from my own family members that there was a time during, you know, Jim Crow, Willie Lynch time that, um, it was difficult to voice out and to really be proud of who you are because our people were being persecuted for speaking out and being who we are. But we need to understand that those traumas were back then and we need to leave those traumas where they are because this is a new generation. And this new generation that's coming up, they not going to be silenced. They not gonna stand up for all that. You see that we not via Alabama Montgomery brawl and other past situations and things where we stand up for one another. We stand up for ourselves and we stand ten toes down on business. We need more situations like that. And not saying that it always has to get violent, but we need to keep the energy. Excuse me. We need to keep that same energy in the in the sense of if we going to be who we are, say who we are, we need to stay 10 toes down on it. Stand on business. And that's really what this video is about today is um allowing teaching our youth the truth and allowing them to stand on it. Okay, so I got something that I wanted to show y'all, something that I went down uh, a few days ago. I meant to do it, do this a little earlier, but um, <laughs> it, it, it ended up not happening. Uh, it's had a lot of things I had to take care of, but we here now, so we're going to get into it. So without further ado, we're going to check this out. All right, y'all, this is a uh, a snippet from the prior or most recent Club Shay Shay interview with um, Amanda Seals. And this was just a little, uh, little quick four minute scene, uh, them going, talking about her, uh, her past experience with teachers and things. And um, this is just a perfect example as to what needs to happen. And what, you know, 
it basically is, is explaining two sides of a spectrum here. One is the one who stands up for themselves and stands up for others and knows the truth and stands ten toes down on it and, and really voice out and speak out on it. And then the other one is basically the taboo, showing the taboo of it all and how those past traumas can really hinder, you know, progress. That's in my opinion, but I'm going to go ahead and run this and let you guys hear it for yourselves. There are a lot of parent-teacher conferences with you, huh? Yes, but not for what I... Well, what do you think they were about? Uh, your excessive talking, maybe the doodling. Um... Funnily enough, no. You know what the parent-teacher conferences were about? What? Amanda is sticking up for other kids in the class. Amanda is correcting me. Like I had a teacher, Ms. Schwank, who had who called a conference because she was talking about Aboriginal art. Mm -hmm. And she said that the she stood in front of the class and said, you know, that the Aborigines are a Stone Age people. And I was like, ma'am, that there are Aboriginals okay. <laughs> alive right now. Right. Like they are a part of civilization. Like, right. what are you talking about? And she's like, Well, Aborig no, you know, what I mean is that they've never advanced. And we in a classroom in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> so, like, if we don't check this type of stuff, right. it's going to just continue. So I was that student. Like, I was the kid who was always raising my hand and um, just wasn't easily appeased by simply just someone being an authority. Right. And my <laughs> was I always I love this because when when she called my mom. And said, you know, I, I'd like to set a conference up because I have some complaints about Amanda. My mom said, well, you know, that's interesting because Amanda has some complaints about you. <laughs> <laughs> and so they came to the meeting. It was my mom and Mr. Wright and Miss Cersei, it's all black people at Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, Florida. And this lady sat there and she and actually you and Mr. Wright had the same bill. And Mr. Wright was like, all right. So, um, you know, are we here to discuss Amanda disrupting the class with her talking. And she was like. No, Amanda doesn't disrupt the class they're talking. She actually helps the other students out. He's like, oh, okay. So is it about her grades? And she's like, actually, no. One of her art pieces is featured in our exhibit at the library. He's like, so what are we here for? She's like, well, you know, she corrects me in front of the class. And these three black people are like, here we go with this racist bullshit. You know, because that's really what it is. We're in Florida in the 80s and the 90s. And um, But let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Okay. If you do, you think she would have felt equally as offended if a white kid? Because I'm assuming this teacher was white, right? Mm -hmm. If a white would have, a white child would have corrected her, I think most teachers would feel some type of way if a child corrects them. That's not for me to surmise. I'm just saying that my experience was this lady giving wrong information. Yeah. And I'm allowed to correct her. Now, this is the same lady who tried to accuse me of stealing. And when a white girl said, no, Amanda didn't steal it, I did. She was like, well, I think both of you need to go to the principal. Right. I'm in Orlando, Florida, which is a notoriously racist state, Florida, in the 90s. And I'm talking to you about a white woman who is speaking about black people, indigenous people in a country where those same indigenous people have had all of their land taken from them by former criminals that were sent there from England. And she is calling them Stone Age people. And I, as a black girl, the only black girl in her class, am correcting her. But I, 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 my thing is, you're right. She possibly misspoke or she didn't know. I guess my question to you is, why do you even feel compelled at this juncture in this interview? Why would you even fee be feel compelled to try to... Because I don't want... Her? Because I'm not defending. But my thing is, is that what I'm trying to say, most adults, when kids correct them or speak, feel some type of way. This is not unique to a black, white, or white, black. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I'm sorry that you took it that way. But I remember when I was growing up, my grandparents and parents said, hey, kids, stay in your place. Adults are speaking. That's all. I don't. Maybe that didn't happen where you were forming in Orlando, Florida. But where I grew up, in, when I grew up, kids did not correct adults. So 
I apologize if you thought, thought it came off as combative. No All right, y'all. So y'all heard it for yourselves. Everything that it went down. And, you know, people have spoken on the context in many different ways. But my take on it is, as a youth, if you see someone doing something wrong, if you notice, knowingly know that this person is spreading misinformation, I don't care how old that person is, don't allow that person to speak on your life or speak on the, you know, and you know that they're saying something wrong, you have that right to correct them, you know. And my kids are very much the same way. And especially on this topic matter, because now you're dealing with identities, misinformation on identities, and this is something that has plagued our community at least since the 1960s, people spreading false information on us and uh, and nobody saying anything or speaking up against it, just going with the flow. And that was the main way that they were able to captive our youth, put our youth in captivity, put our people in captivity, keep our keep people, keep our people in captivity. It was by the education system. And knowing that we trained our kids to be seen and not heard, to never correct an adult, they took advantage of that and in return have indoctrinated multiple generations into thinking that they're something that they're not. So this is a perfect example and shout out to uh, Amanda Seals and her parent, her mother for instilling that truth early in her that we are indigenous people. Us as copper tone, copper colored aborigines, we are the aborigines and the, the aborigines and indigenous to our respective lands. I believe her mother is from Grenada, which is a Caribbean island, which still is a part of the Americas. And I know I hear people all the time, they say, oh, well, you know, the Caribbeans are the Caribbeans and, you know, they think they're African and, you know, they don't belong with us or they're, you know, they got different, they got different names and stuff for them, such as, you know, tethers and things of that nature. Look, I'm not going to get into all that because the bottom line is when you look at every antiquity book, you look at all the ethnology, you will see that these Caribbean islands from Hawaii all the way down to Haiti, all of these islands that surround Turtle Island are indeed a part of the Americas. Those are indigenous aborigines. Those are American Indians. They are Amerindians. Now we all may have different cultures, different lifestyles, different ways of thinking. And that's okay. And that, and the thing is, I think the, uh, the negativity comes from those adapting other people's culture and then going around and saying that those whose culture they've adapted had no culture to begin with. Now, that is disrespectful from either way, either way you look at it. So I get that, and I'm not against that. And people going to say what they're going to say about it. But my thing is, when you come down to brass tacks, when you get down to it, they are Niji. We are all Niji. Okay? And it's the respecting of the boundaries and the respecting of one another's culture and the respecting of one another's heritage and recognizing where we're at and where we're from, that's what's going to bring us together. Finding the positivity in our differences and coming to a common agreement. That's what's going to keep us together. That's what's going to bring us together. All right, so with that being said, she knew when 
you know, her people came out here. She was out there in Florida. She's born in Florida. She knew who the Aborigines are because her mother herself is an Aborigine. You know, and I believe she said her father is from uh, is a is a Niji out here from Boston um, in Massachusetts. So you can fact check me on that. Go check that out for yourself. But I believe she said he grew up on in the States and her mother is from the islands. Bottom line is she is very what very much intact with her indigeneity. At least she was. Back then when she was a child, I mean, I can't speak on her, you know, now. I, I haven't seen the full interview. I tried to get through this three damn hours. I didn't have enough time. But um, this ran across my timeline. This is on the episode snippet. So I just wanted to speak on that and let y'all know that, you know, our children today, we're coming to another time of realization, another time of awakening and in the midst of us learning the truth, we have to be teaching our children the right way. And when we teach our children these things and they develop a sense of pride and a sense of knowing, knowledge and wisdom from it, allow them to speak out. Don't, I mean, you know, don't, don't hinder them. Still, you know, teach them and train them in the ways that they should act. I mean, not, you know, causing or starting no trouble. And as you can see, this young lady did not start any trouble. She didn't go around, you know, looking for a fight. All she did was simply correct because she felt insulted. And she felt that her peers were being insulted. And be it that she was the only Aborigine in the classroom, she felt in her deep within her essence, that it was time to speak up. She wasn't going to allow this misinformation to be spread so that all these other kids around her that aren't indigenous go around and say, oh, well, the Aborigines are Stone Age people and blah, 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 blah. When you clearly have indigenous Aborigines, even here today in 2024, moving around, setting the culture, setting the influence, being the blueprint to everything that they're doing mainstream. That was the ultimate disrespect, and she corrected that, and I thought she was in the right. Now, her brother Shay Shay, brother Shannon Sharp, I think he kind of he, he kind of fumbled on this one, personally, but at the same time, I don't fault him. I don't, there's no disrespect towards him at all, because... He was born in a time and born in an era, born in an area where that trauma was prevalent and he was taught at a young age to be seen and not heard, mostly for the sake of his safety, I'm sure. Growing up in Georgia during that time and, you know, parents growing up in the South in that time, you know, they've seen a lot of things. And that's understandable. And it just shows the difference of culture, even as Aborigines, as Niji, that we have from the South to the East Coast, to the North, to the West Coast. You know what I mean? Like we, we different. You know, a lot of people say California Nijis, they, they move different. You know, a lot of people say New York Nijis, they move different. You know, Folks from the South, they move different. It's, you know, the same thing with Florida Nijis. We all, you know, everywhere, we move different. From the Montana Niji to, you know, everywhere. Uh, Minnesota, we all over the place. We're all over this island, but we all have our own set ways and customs and culture. But we are all still Niji, even our Nijis out there in the islands. We are all still Niji. We move different, but we all are still Niji, right? We all Aborigines. But um, yeah, that's just one thing right there that we got to allow our kids to speak up and be proud of who they are 
And you see, she didn't get in trouble. There was no trouble at all. Found out that the lady, you know, just really had a bias towards her. And with that bias, you know, comes you you leave yourself open to being called those different tropes. And I know he was trying to, you know, for the sake of the show and everything and not trying to accuse people of those things and you know, see how he tried to clean it up. But either way you look at it, it is what it is. You leave yourself to that kind of open criticism when you constantly are picking at somebody. And that's one thing that I commend again, her principal and her, her mother for is protecting our youth. And that's the thing. When we teach our children, we teach our youth these things, we have to protect them at all costs. Show them how to protect themselves as well. But be that protector. As you, as we are guards of this truth, of this knowledge, of our identity, we show them to be guards of this truth and knowledge. And we protect those that we teach, that we learn from, and that we teach because we are all in this together. Like I said, we are all Niji, okay? So I think I spoke enough on, on this part, and I just wanted to end on uh, a, a more, an even more positive note because this wasn't even negative at all, and people are spinning it in different ways and trying to make their own, you know, Look, it's 2024, and she was speaking about this back in the, the 80s and 90s. You know what I'm saying? The 90s. So, psh, man, like, kudos, kudos. And, you know, it, it's important. It's, it's, it's important, and it's beautiful how this information is getting out there into the mainstream. I, I consider this a, a mainstream podcast. You know, a lot of people, this thing gets millions of views, you know. And to hear that the so-called black people are the indigenous, the aborigines. I mean, that was a gem. That was a serious gem in itself. So with that being done, and with that being said, I appreciate Shannon Sharp for having her on his show and allowing her to get that off. You know, they had, you could see that they visibly had their differences here and there, but it was a beautiful thing for them to go back and forth and allow each other and gave each other proper respect to, you know, really share how they felt. But you could just see the two, the two different sides and the, the spectrums of which our people move. You know what I mean? So it's a but bottom line is my thing is it's a new generation. And I'm gonna show you what this new generation is about. I got a I got a video right here that I want to show y'all real quick. So if y'all bear with me, if y'all have been with me to hear this far, please make sure you like like this video, make sure you share this video. And if you're new watching this, subscribe to the channel because we're gonna have more stuff, you know. When I hear gems like this go down and, you know, I don't do current issues and stuff like that too much. But if it's something like this where the truth is getting out, I'm going to definitely say something on it, you know, if it run across me. But outside of that, we're always getting into the true story. You can check out my channel as you subscribe and uh, see what we're about. Let's continue to grow this community. But we're going to end it on this last video right here. So. We're going to pause for the calls and we're going to get to it. Hey, bro, we not from Africa. Right here. Right here. We from right, right here. here. We from America. Oh, yeah. Who land is this? Oh, it's y'all land. Oh, Tell them it's y'all land. Yeah. Who, they, who they stole it That's from? That's right there. Oh, yeah. They stole it from us. Yeah, talk y'all shit. But look, I just want to know. I just want y'all to know. Have a good day and I'm a good kid. Stay okay. positive. Meditate. Oh, Ooh, he's focused. He's focused, yeah. All right, y'all. So there we have it. I mean, this generation is here. And as we continue to teach our youth, know that they will be heard. Not only will they be seen, but they will be heard. And it's up to us as parents, 
as teachers, as mentors, to train them in the way that they ought to move. So, as you can see, the boldness is there. And with the proper teaching, with the proper nurturing, man, there is no limit to the heights that our youth can reach. So, as we move forward, y'all, always keep the youth in mind. Keep this next generation in mind because they here. They here and they not going nowhere. You feel me? So, with that being said, I cherish y'all. Once again, 300 strong. I really appreciate y'all. And, um, yeah, let's keep growing. Let's keep learning. Let's keep building. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. And let's get this information out there. Let's keep let's keep spreading this truth, spreading this this good, this good information right here. All right. Chief Steve signing out. Tata Kista. I cherish y'all. And your cookie.